Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Have you ever wondered if there is a difference between dancing barefoot versus dancing in padded socks? Well, today we have Dr. Jeffrey Russell. He is a clinician and a researcher who is going to share with us his answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jeff Russell, and I am an associate professor of athletic training at Ohio University. Also, I'm the director of science and health and artistic performance, which we call by the acronym SHAPE. Uh, we have a clinic there that takes care of all of our dancers, all of our music students, our theater production, theater performance students, film students, and our marching band. So we are committed to performing artists, and it's just a great uh, pleasure to be able to participate in this and in terms of the, the kinds of work I do, I changed from sports medicine, traditional athletic training, to performing arts medicine back in 2002. So I'm an athletic trainer that, that deals with performing arts injuries. I'm also a researcher, so a clinician and a researcher. And that gives me kind of a double angle view of what's going on in the world of performing arts and how we can best take care of performing artists. So I want to just take a moment to talk about some research that I've finished that's on Apollo padded dance socks and the Apollo socks uh, I'm, I'm don't, I don't work for the company they're not paying me to endorse them uh, but I can tell you that they are a, a high quality product and the, the important part of what they provide in their socks really is some padding underneath the balls of the feet and underneath the heel as well as a very heavy elastic component that helps support the foot so there's a lot of features to this particular product that I think are important. But from a research standpoint, what I was able to do in a project that I did uh, alongside one of my students in my lab is we compared dancing in bare feet with dancing with the socks on. And we used little force sensors that went inside the socks underneath the feet. And we tried to determine if wearing the socks actually reduced the forces that we saw in the feet. And indeed, we did see some small differences. So uh, the difference between wearing a uh, sock and barefoot, the socks had lower force generated through to the foot. And that small increment that we saw in a 40 second dance sequence, which we used uh, modern dancers and just took a short sequence of, of testing for them, there isn't any dancer in the world that only dances for 40 seconds. And so what, what I believe these small increments that we found are important for is understanding how over the long term, over the, the uh, amount of dancing that most dancers will do, just hours and hours a day, that the small increments of, of uh, preventing such force um, c uh, conduction through to the foot may be very, very beneficial. I think a bigger topic related to that though for, for, for dancers, for acrobatic dancers, modern dancers, for competition dancers, one of the, the really important uh, aspects is to think about the number of hours that you're on your feet, the number of hours that you're spending in studio and rehearsals and performing. Really understand that, that you've got to take care of your body and you know, wearing a pair of padded dance socks may be something that, that helps with that. But you have to attend to how much are you putting on your body? What are the demands? And if you're putting a certain number of demands on your body, your body can't, can't hold up to those demands, then there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a breakdown. And then you've got to see clinical people like myself to be taken care of. So really the key would be let's intelligently decide how much quantity we're going to use we're going to um, dance in a given day and then what are some of the tools that we can use to help reduce some of the demands such as padded dance socks and other types of equipment types of types of flooring if you have to you have to change the the, the flooring perhaps I mean there, there may be 
uh, a situation where you're on concrete, you can't dance on concrete as much as you can dance on a sprung dance floor. So there are a lot of variables in all of this that have to be taken into account. I just studied this one small aspect of the dance socks and found favorable results. But I want that to make a difference in the lives of dancers. I want that kind of information to get out where, where we're thinking as, as clinicians, as researchers, as dance teachers, as dancers, how do we best take all that information we have, put it together into something that's really going to help the dancers be, be healthy, um, be more well, be able to dance to the best of their ability, be able to perform the way that they want to, the way they've been taught, the way they've been choreographed. I mean, all of that's important, but to get the dancer to the best level of performance is going to take all of us working together to make sure that these various factors are taken into account so we can be safe, healthy, and so we can enjoy the dance that the dancers have to offer. It sounds like padded socks do offer more protection than bare feet especially over prolonged periods of activity. I don't know about you, but it makes me so happy to know that there are clinicians and researchers from all over the world who, like Dr. Jeffrey Russell, are interested in keeping our dancers healthy and dancing to the best of their ability. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.